Hey Bales, my name is Simon, welcome to an array of tips and tricks in Game Maker Studio. First tip is about optimizing your use of arrays. If you need to create an array, for example for an inter inventory, like in this example, uh, and you already know how long you need it to be, like we need to have 16 slots in it here, uh, you can optimize the creation by initializing it starting from the last index. So instead of doing it this uh, standard way, where you take uh, a for loop for example and do it from 0 to 15 it will come, uh, and then put an index in, in each time, uh, you can do it like this, where you take it starting from 15 and down to 0. This way, you reserve the full space in memory in one take, which will make the array go faster than if you reserve the memory on one index at a time, as you would if you started from zero. Um, and you can think of this as, uh, instead of putting up one bookshelf every time you buy a new book, then you buy a bookshelf that is big enough to handle the amount of book you think you will have later. It makes more sense. You only need to do this while you initialize the array. Um, so after this you can loop through the indexes like this as you need to, um, but when you create the array and you initialize the, the indexes, uh, it's the best way to do it in reverse. You do not need to make the full loop in reverse though, you can also just set the, the last index of the array to some value and then you can do an ordinary loop uh, going forward because then the memory is reserved. Next tip is on using accessors. Before accessors came to Game Maker, you would usually do something like this to, to use the, the for, for example in this case a map. Uh, you will create the map, then you would add the indexes uh, using the uh, dsmapAdd uh, function, and then uh, when you needed to access one of your uh, indexes, you would use the dsmapFind value uh, function. And then came accessors. Accessors makes it uh, possible to treat uh, maps and uh, lists and grids much like you would uh, arrays. You will still need to create the map as you would before, but instead of using a function to add the indexes, you can simply write the map uh, variable name, uh, and then like an array in clamps, uh, and then what index you need it to be, uh, or what key in this ca case you want to fill, and then the value. The one difference from, uh, from arrays is that you have this uh, accessor sign uh, in the beginning of your clamp. This sign changes depending on what type of data structure you are accessing. If you are using a list, you will have a line, uh, a vertical line, like when you're making the OR signs uh, in your conditionals. Um, this is pretty easy to remember. A list is a linear uh, data structure, so you have a line, which is pretty as much as linear as you get. The next one, the map, uses a question mark, mark and uh, I think this makes sense as well, because in my head at least, I think like uh, a map is like, where am I, and all these questions of location, so I think a map uh, and a question mark goes well together in that sense. And a grid uses a hash attack or a numeral sign, um, depending on how old school you are, or if you are on the whole hashtag thing. And uh, the hashtag is uh, a grid, so that makes sense that the grid uses a grid as its sign. And of course, you can see here we have 1-1, one, one, but the grid is of course uh, two-dimensional, it has a uh, width and a height, so you need to of course have both uh, arguments or both uh, values in there. You might think it didn't make a lot of change up here, it's not like it's much shorter, but in the long run uh, it can make a lot of difference if you need to do a lot of things. Also it's way easier to uh, get your things, like if you win, you want the weapon to be uh, the item in inventory slot 0, or the first slot, um, you can just write it like this instead of going to call the, the function like up here. So. Um, in the long run, it can make it a lot easier to work with. Um, it might seem like it's a minor thing in this short, uh, small scope, but uh, trust me, it really can help you. Condition shall always seeketh the truth. Uh, this means you do not need to write the uh, equals uh, true or equals false or one or zero uh, as their value counterparts is uh, when you are checking variables and functions. 
So uh, why do this as I wrote so simply, uh, where you have a pretty long line and you can get much longer if you're using a lot of functions and uh, variable checks, um, when you could do something like this instead. And these two pieces of code does the exact same thing, but to check if the variable is true, you can just say if the variable, because conditionals are always testing if they are true. Likewise, to test if something is false, just put an exclamation mark before it, because then it will reverse it. It will check for the false instead. Um, so it will check if it's false, and if it's false, then it's truth that it, that it is false. So it's always uh, checking for truth in some manner. Um, so there's no reason to have these when you're checking booleans. Also, a little bonus fact, um, when it checks for truth, it doesn't check directly for boolean. It's checking if it is, I think it's below 0.5, then it's false, so if you have a zero or a negative value or something, it will treat it as false. And if you have uh, anything above that, uh, it is uh, treated as true uh, if you just write it like this. But keeping in the track of uh, conditional statements, uh, short circuiting is a thing added to Game Maker uh, a while ago, um, but it's a very helpful thing. Um, if you are using a project before it was added, you will need to go to uh, game settings and uh, toggle it on. You can also just don't want it to be there. You can toggle it, it off if you want to, but really it's a good thing to have in your programs because what it do is when it reads this whole line of code, it first checks the first one. If that's true, then we can continue. Then it checks the next one. If that's true, it can continue. Then it checks the next one. And then if that is, for example, false, this one, then it will just skip the rest of the code because there's no reason to check this one and this one because either way, something up here was false, so it will not do the code in here. So uh, it simply cuts off all the unnecessary checks, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, this also means that if you are, for example, doing uh, something like this over here, uh, where it finds the nearest instance of object example, and takes that Y position and checks it if it's above 100, um, if there, normally, if we did not have this instance check first, uh, or if there was no uh, short circuiting, then if there was not existing an uh, object or an instance of object example, then this would throw an error because you cannot take the y value of nothing. So um, by doing this check first, check if the instance exists, then you can check uh, use something like this in your conditionals as well, uh, which is pretty cool. Next up, you can create local variables uh, and use these in your code. And uh, local variables are variables you create like this, with a bar, and then with the variables afterwards. Um, you can also define them up here, like say zero if you want to, or set a value already up there. That's okay, that still works. Um, but the good thing about the local variables is they only exist in the now. The moment we go out of this object, this instance, or this event, uh, this block of code, uh, they will cease to exist, meaning that they are uh, pretty nice to your towards your memory. And uh, that's a good thing, because then we can speed up the process of a lot of things. And uh, they are especially good to do use if you need to uh, use the same value multiple times. So in this case, uh, we get the distance we need to move, we get the direction we need to move in, and then we use that twice, uh, both of this val these values in length direction x and y, to move the right amount of x and y uh, values. And then we use it again in here. We check if our image angle is not all way already our current uh, our new direction, uh, and if there's uh, we are not going into a, a object uh, of object example, um, then we change our image angle to this direction and yeah it's pretty clear this is a lot faster than if we were to have this code everywhere where we needed to check that value that can become a lot more code so whenever you need to use a value multiple times it's a good idea to consider using a local variable to store that value likewise you can use scripts to uh, repeat some of the code you need to use a lot um, if you, uh, for example, I have made this step toward code, which will move you one pixel uh, toward the position uh, 
you will decide, in this case just the mouse position, and uh, then I have repeat this four times, uh, simply to, to uh, move with a speed of four, and uh, in this step it checks if there is a collision with object example on the way, if there is, then it returns false, and if it returns false, then it breaks. And just so you can see it, this is a pretty simple script, it's not very complicated. But uh, it's still better than writing this multiple times if I, for example, in another object, another in, uh, entity of some sort, need to also do this check and another place also do this check, I can just keep referring to the, to the script and then uh, I don't have to write it again and again. Also, uh, here I have a, a copy of the other script with one small change, and the change is that if I go into this one uh, and edit, you'll see in the very bottom where it has the function uh, argument help, uh, it shows which uh, values I need to put into the... It's still hard to see in the video maybe, but uh, it shows down here uh, that I need to put the x and the y value in here. If I go to my second script here, it doesn't show anything down there, there's no help to get at all. And uh, help like this can uh, be received in a pretty simple way. Here we have the script without a header, and here we have it with a header. And a header, uh, uh, with a header I mean uh, a comment, but where I use three slashes instead of two. If you're in the first line of your script have three uh, slashes, then your script name, and then the variables uh, whatever you need to have in between here, uh, the arguments here, then you can, uh, then it will display in the help uh, down in the bottom. Uh, so when you make scripts, remember to do this so that everyone can easily see what you ne they need to put into the arguments without going into the script every time. Likewise, if you in a ordinary code block use the triple slashes in the first line and then write something, it will appear out here as the name of the code block. Uh, so this can help you keep uh, everything neat and tight uh, in your coding and give you a greater overview. And now, one more way to stop yourself from writing the same code again and again. If you press F2, you'll get this small menu where you can select uh, different code snippets as they're called. For example, if you need to do an if-else, you can put this in and then it fills out the code for you and you can put in the, the parts you need. You can also access this through the context menu if you right click and then go to code snippets. I've never myself gotten used to use this function, but uh, I believe it can help you uh, save a lot of time if you uh, get used to it and use it correctly. Um, you can go out and edit what snippets should show. You can do this by finding the folder uh, where you have install installed GameMaker scroll down and find snippets, snippets.txt and here you can then using the same uh, setup as they have done so far where I believe the, the hashtags are uh, line breaks um, and you can set the name before this is the name of the snippet uh, and then you can change it for your own way so if you are setting up your code differently then, uh, then this for example I prefer having it like like this instead um, and then I don't use this in the repeat functions if you want to uh, change it for your own uh, how you want yourself to to have the code then you can just do that in that file save it and then they will work as that instead another way to keep your game speedy is by disabling alpha blending when it's not needed alpha blending is uh, simply telling you whether you want the trans transparency in your sprites to actually be transparent. Uh, normally it's set to true of course, uh, so they're transparent if you draw them to be transparent. If you set it to false then transparent sprites will not be transparent anymore and they will just be a square uh, depending on their sprite size. Um, so uh, if you want to draw something, for example a background where you don't have any transparency already, then you can toggle off uh, the alpha blending and then draw it and then toggle it on afterwards again and this will uh, make the drawing of the background faster because it doesn't have to handle the transparency because it knows hey I'm not going to draw anything transparent so uh, that's one way to make it faster of course the more you can fill in uh, in between these two uh, the better because if you do this for everything you need to draw like this then it's of course uh, counterproductive but if you instead just 
have one in the start and one in the end for everything you need to draw uh, like this, then it's the best way to use the function. One thing that really can piss me off sometimes in Game Maker is uh, if I want to uh, type in a variable name or something and then it comes with a code completion uh, thing because it thinks I'm trying to write a function name or something like that. Uh, for example, uh, I like to use uh, di to, uh, to indicate this is a direction, but uh, when I do this, it comes with all these pop-ups with uh, different functions or the direction variable. And if I then write this and then go to the next line, sometimes it will pop up and then it will autocorrect what I'm writing. I don't like that. But I do like to ha uh, having this, so when I write a function, me, and then, ah, it's this one. Can help me if I can't quite remember the name of the functions, um, because I haven't used them a lot of time or something like that. You can change this. If you go to File, Preferences, Scripts and Code, and then uh, Disables Show Autocompletion Options. Then you can still access this. First of all, it will not turn up whenever you write something. It will not come automatically, but if you want to know, okay, what functions can I go to from here, you can press Control space and it will show it. So uh, I prefer have it like this because then I can uh, then I can uh, use this uh, help when I need it and not all the time because sometimes it just goes in the way for me. The last one is a set of functions that I think is relatively new. At least I didn't know of them before. Uh, yesterday. Um, it could be I've just been blind, but I know back when I played around with making some software in Game Maker where I needed these functions, they didn't exist. So so they have been implemented sometime in the lifetime of Studio, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, if you select that the player can resize the game window, then you can use this set of functions to uh, limit how small they can make the window, how big they can make the window, uh, both uh, horizontally and vertically. And the functions are simply window set uh, min width, set min height, set max width, and set max height. And if you set this, then uh, when you are have the window, you can you are limited to set the width and height to the uh, the uh, values you have selected. So, for example, here I cannot change the the vertical size of the window because it is forced both uh, to be minimum 200 and maximum 200. I can, however change my uh, width. This does uh, only happen whenever you try to change the window size, meaning that if your window or your game uh, room is set to be taller than the 200, uh, then it will start out being taller and then the moment you try to resize the window, it will snap into its uh, maximum size. Um, so have this in, uh, in, in your head when using the functions. But I believe that was everything for this time. Uh, thank you for watching this video. And if you have something uh, along these lines, some tips and tricks you want to share, um, post them in the com comments and uh, I might try to gather uh, enough tricks to do another of these uh, arrays of tricks videos. Uh, I think it's a good way to get a lot of info out uh, in one uh, take. And um, I think it's pretty easy to follow. But uh, if you disagree with that, or if you agree with that, uh, write that in the comment and will, comments at will, so I can uh, get this feedback and, and figure out uh, what works and what doesn't work. Um, but yeah, I think that was everything. If you uh, want to watch more of my videos and are not already subscribed, I uh, dare you to subscribe. And uh, if you want to know more of what are going on in my life and uh, how I do uh, outside of uh, when I'm not posting videos, uh, but still relevant stuff, then you can follow me on uh, Twitter, or on Facebook or Google Plus and uh, there I will uh, post uh, now and then to tell what I do uh, that is somewhat related to game making or technology and that kind of stuff. Um, but that's pretty much all. Thanks for watching. Bye!